Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for uh, returning to uh, the hall uh, promptly for the start at 11 a.m. of our uh, third uh, plenary uh, this morning. Uh, the um, title uh, of the session, uh, as in our agenda, is uh, Conflict and Diplomacy in the Middle East, but we don't, by that title, want to uh, leave the impression that uh, conflict is more important than diplomacy. Uh, we want, on the other hand, to uh, emphasize uh, the importance of uh, persistent uh, diplomacy uh, in seeking uh, to avoid and then uh, to end uh, conflict. It was, after all, even a, a theme brought up by uh, Secretary of Defense uh, James Mattis in his uh, remarks informally in the Q&A session when he uh, reminded everybody that he considered that uh, his job uh, as uh, Secretary of Defense uh, was to do everything he could uh, to leave the space uh, for diplomats to operate uh, and ensure both uh, the prevention and ultimately, if not prevented, the resolution of uh, conflict. And uh, there are sadly, however, many, many different uh, conflicts taking place at present uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and we're uh, delighted to have uh, three uh, different perspectives on that uh, theme at this uh, plenary. Uh, and I will invite them to speak uh, uh, in the order in which you uh, see them on the stage. Uh, we are delighted to have, uh, again, at the Manama Dialogue, uh, the Minister of Defense uh, of the Federal Republic of Germany, uh, Ursula uh, von der Leyen, uh, who has been before to the Manama Dialogue, and we welcome her uh, back uh, to uh, this dialogue. Uh, for her first appearance at the Manama Dialogue, it's uh, a real delight to have Dottoressa Elisabetta Trenta, the Minister of Defense of Italy, uh, but it's worth looking at her uh, CV on the app because she has been uh, engaged diplomatically uh, throughout her career in a number of the most challenging uh, conflicts uh, in the region. Uh, and uh, it's really an honor to have also with us uh, today uh, His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi, the Minister responsible for foreign affairs uh, in the Sultanate of Oman, uh, probably one of the longest uh, serving foreign ministers uh, in the region. Uh, and uh, we have been uh, delighted to work closely with the Sultanate uh, of Oman on a number of uh, diplomatic uh, uh, efforts. We have a, a South Asia conference each year in, in Muscat that usefully brings together uh, personalities from uh, South Asia to precisely uh, avoid conflict and uh, exchange uh, views. Uh, so with that uh, preface uh, and clarification of the, the purpose of this session, could I now invite uh, the Minister of Defense of Germany, Ursula von der Leyen, to address the Manama Dialogue. Thank you very much, John. Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, and John, thank you very much. Um, what an honor to celebrate with you the 60th birthday of IISS. I want to thank our host, Bahrain, for this outstanding conference again. And uh, it's a great pleasure to join my colleague, Elisabetta Trenta, and His Excellency on the panel. I'm delighted to be speaking again at the Manama Dialogue after I did so in 2016, I spoke about our common concerns, for example, terror attacks in our capital or illegal human trafficking. Today, two years later, we still talk about the worries we have given the crises, conflicts, and wars in the region, but also we talk about, and we see the opportunities that the people in the region are eager to seize. That brings me straight to the topic of our panel, conflict and diplomacy in the Middle East. Let me start by giving you my German and European perspective on the conflicts. Recent years have taught us that the conflict zone 
of the Middle East is ne neither isolated nor detached. It is situated in the center of an arc of crisis stretching from the Sahel and North Africa all the way to the Gulf. Many of the conflicts are connected and interlinked. Human traffickers are running the gruesome business in the Mediterranean Sea. The sea has become a graveyard for tens of thousands of people. Political transition in Libya is very much at risk. As a result of the chaos there, the region has been swamped with weapons. The people in Yemen are suffering a humanitarian crisis of catastrophic dimension. And I want to refer to the outstanding remarks of Secretary Mattis. It is time for diplomacy now. It is high time now, after years of civil war, after suffering and misery, people demand peace and a life free from fear of war and oppression, and nothing indicates that conflicting interests could be brought to success through the ongoing use of force. Quite the contrary. There are many reasons to believe that diplomatic solutions can be found provided that all voices are heard and that negotiations are not held about them, but with them. This can work if we all fully support the United Nations approaches. When I say all, I mean the parties to the conflict, the countries in the region, and of course, also us neighbors. The war in Syria has reduced the country to rubble. The noise of battle is dying down, yet it will cost billions and billions to rebuild the country. I do not see Assad and his allies able to master this huge investment. The help of the international community is crucial. However, reconstruction to the profit of the dictatorship of Assad is not conceivable. To be very clear, there will be only investment into Syria if there's a satisfying political process that includes all parties. There's no other way than engaging in the peace talks of the United Nations. In this crucial phase, all those who really care about the people in Syria should pull their full weight to support the Geneva process. This is the reason why today, Chancellor Merkel President Macron, President Putin are meeting at the invitation of President Erdogan. It is about revitalizing the Geneva process in line with United Nations Security Council Resolution 2254. In this respect, over the past year, Staffan de Mistura's efforts have been invaluable and have paved the way. And let me take the opportunity to thank him for his work. In Iraq too, it is all about stabilization and reconstruction now, but the preconditions are different. Together with the Iraqi government and the people of Iraq, an international coalition of more than 70 countries fought and defeated Daesh. And now together, we have the chance to rebuild and reconcile the country. We all know winning peace requires security, education, economic development, and a broad investment all packaged together in a political plan. I commend the new government of Iraq. You can count on Germany in achieving a fair internal balance that is acceptable to the people of Iraq. Germany has engaged already with 1.5 billion euros and especially supported the Peshmerga in their fight against Daesh. And we will expand our efforts. We just decided to continue our capacity building of the Iraqi security forces and most important, we will continue our economic cooperation and offer investments focusing mainly on infrastructure. At the same time, we are engaged in close and successful cooperation with key partners in the region 
such as our Jordan friends, who carry a huge burden, burden for the security in the region and beyond. And I want to express my condolences for the death of the school children. We stand at your side. We also engage because we are convinced of the immense opportunities of this region. The creativity of a bright generation of young people, empowerment of women, at least half of the people, your cultural richness, economic growth, diversification, and many opportunities for common trade and investment. I am convinced now is the time to fully concentrate on political solution and peace processes. And these processes have to be driven by the countries of the region. And finally, people all over the region expect a good balance between security and freedom. They demand respect for human rights and dignity of each human being. Therefore, the killing of Jamal Khashoggi the circumstances must be fully investigated and brought to light regardless of considerable political consequences. It is a question of human dignity, but also a question of and an opportunity for credibility, trust, and transparency. And these values are the pillars of a common future that has to be built together. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come here to Bahrain not just as a European, but as your European neighbor. And as neighbors, we share each other's problems and we are ready to find solutions together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Minister of Defense of Italy, we invite you to take the podium. Excellencies, ministries, military authorities, distinguished guests, let me first of all congratulate the Kingdom of Bahrain for the leadership shown in this initiative and for, for the wonder of hospitality. And also, I'd like to thank the organizer of this remarkable event, which has rightfully become a traditional and extremely highly qualified appointment. It's for me an honor to speak before such a qualified uh, audience, together with the prominent speakers of this panel. I'm glad to provide you with the view of Italy and the Italian defense on a topic which I deem of the utmost importance. As we all know, the majority of world conflicts today, especially in the Middle Eastern region, are fought within states and not among states as it was in the past. Moreover, they mostly don't occur among military regular forces, but with the contribution of violent extremist organization. Their action and communication are able to influence the conflicts independently from the strategies adopted by traditional diplomacy to stabilize critical situation. In order to understand this phenomenon, it is important to consider how digital media, I mean Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, Telegram, Skype, YouTube, and others, have been changing the way information is produced, gathered, and disseminated by a lot of users that are not traditional editors in conflict-affected societies. These new media are able to reach their target also far away from the place where information is produced, allowing a wide number of people to become actors in the conflict's dynamic, also if they are not directly and physically involved. Some characteristics of digital media influence current conflicts, both fighters and affected societies. In fact, not only the communication capacities of violent extremist organization, but also their organization and their command and control rules depend on the way digital media are able to spread their message. In the meantime, new media have also conflict generating and conflict escalation effects. As a matter of fact, Daesh's strategy provides us with a tangible example. Indeed, communication has been crucial to Daesh's project 
at least as important in achieving results as its military victories on the ground. Daesh's portrayal of his strength or even invincibility went beyond the local battle grounds onto a regional and international scene. The result is an unprecedented impact on security, migration, economics, tourism, and political debate. The quick progress of communication platform, the low prices of technology, and the revolution of communication-based services gave almost everybody, violent extremist organization included, the possibility to reach and be reached with continuity and regardless of the geographical distance. New technologies introduced fresh opportunities as well as threats to interact with people, give them a space to talk, share, and prompt common action. All these elements created tremendous occasion and yet brought additional risk. Daesh communication has not only been the space where the terrorist group has shown its project to both follower and enemies or publicize, publicized its success. It is an important part of the battlefield itself. Even beyond, Daesh propaganda has really been capable of attracting vulnerable individuals and uh, radicalizing them. Recent studies have shown that almost 40,000 left their homes to join Daesh in Iraq, Syria, and Libya, and millions become sympathetic to their cause across the globe. Arguably, a large part of Daesh's success comes from uh, its exploitation of gaps and flaws that we, as governments, international organizations, and civil society left open. As a consequence, terrorist groups use propaganda as a tool through which they can assert themselves, survive, and flourish. Therefore, we need to work together, even closer, and share more with the prime aim of turning communication from an element of threat to a tool of collective security and international stability. In this direction, among those many steps uh, we have taken together, the, the global coalition against Daesh has been capable of achieving remarkable results through its lines of efforts, I mean military, stabilization, communication, counterfinance, and counter foreign terrorist fighters. Italy is proud to be part of the global coalition which has brought us several lessons besides the many achievements. Indeed, a lot remains to be done since terrorism is strong and dangerous. However, I would like to share with you the main three lessons we have learned so far from my perspective. Firstly, we have uh, underestimated the threat. We missed in connecting the dots. Thus, we were driven by the events rather than being the bus driver. Secondly, we have understood that we, as a whole SYNC community, have to sit all in the same bus together and operate in a very cohesive way. The results we have been achieving so far are the most concrete demonstration of it. Third and foremost, it is a matter of fact that the only possible solution requests Lo full local ownership, meaning that uh, we have to invest in the involvement of both local authorities and societies following a stepwise and inclusive approach. Inclusive approach that uh, we have developed and are applying on a daily basis in every operational theater. Training, security force assistance, and stability policing have become our lines on a force from the Balkans to Afghanistan, from Iraq to the Horn of Africa, from Libya to Niger, throughout the local population, our real center of gravity. Thanks to our soldiers and carabinieri, Italy has contributed to the training to training thousands of security forces, especially in Iraq, where they have been prime actors in the fight against Daesh. Within a common strategic communication perspective, we should tailor new narratives locally developed and broadcasted in order to tackle our counterparts' propaganda and finally win communities, hearts, and minds. In conclusion, I will leave you with a question. Thinking locally, are we sure that all critical actors have been engaged? 
what could uh, be done to bring them all on board? Thank you very much for your attention. Minister Trenta, thank you uh, very much. And may I now invite uh, His Excellency Yusuf Bin Alawi uh, to take the podium and address uh, the third plenary of this Manama Dialogue. Thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So I will speak the Arabic language so that I will give you a picture التي اعتقد انها مناسبه ان اذكرها في هذا اللقاء الطيب وقبل ان نبدا اود ان اقدم التعازي لاخينا معالي وزير الخارجيه الاردنيه على ما حصل نتيجه للبيئه وما يعرف باختلاف المناخ نريد ان نقنع كل من لا يريد ان يقتنع ان المناخ اذا لم يتم معالجته سوف يشكل كثيرا من المآسي والخسائر. اخواني ايها الحضور انا ادرك انكم تريدون ان تستمعوا على ما شاهدتموه بالامس عن زيارات الى السلطنه من معالي من فخامه الرئيس الفلسطيني وفخامه رئيس وزراء دوله اسرائيل. ونحن مسرورين و مهتمين جدا بان نقلعكم على ما يمكن نقلعكم عليه لاننا نعتقد الزمن الان اصبح مناسب لكي نبدا ونشرع فيه تفكير بجديه الى كيفيه التخلص من المشاكل التي هي لا تسمح لدول المنطقه منطقه الشرق الاوسط بالتطور الذي تستحقه نحن ننظر الى ان القضية الفلسطينية هي أساس المشاكل كلها التي حصلت خلال النصف الآخر من القرن الماضي و18 سنة التي هي من القرن ال21 ولا يمكننا إلا أن نعمل في كيف ننهي هذه المشكلات وأن نوجد مستقبل لجيل جديد من المنطقة يستطيع أن يتمكن من أن يزامل الأجيال الأخرى على الكرة الأرضية نحو المستقبل وفي هذا الأساس نعلم وندرك ونقرأ أن دولة إسرائيل أصبحت دولة نتيجة لظروف عالمية حصلت في بعد الحرب العالمية الثانية والآن نرى أن دولة فلسطين ينبغي أن يتم إنشاؤها لأنها أصبحت ضرورة استراتيجية للتخلص من ما يعرف بالإرهاب والتأخر والجهل ولذلك على هذا الأساس بدأنا جهدا متواضعا لنعرض هذه الآراء التي نعتقد أنها أساسية على طرفين الصراحة ولكننا لسنا, لسنا نحن بوسطاء لسنا وسطاء في هذا المسار ولكننا نقدم التسهيلات والافكار التي يمكن ان تكون هي فيها شيء من الجديد هذا الجديد الذي يمكن يساعد الطرفين على ان يكونوا اكثر استعدادا للمضي قدما معا في انشاء الدوله الفلسطينيه وتحقيق الامن والاستقرار و إعطاء الفرصة لدول المنطقة بأن تتخلص من كل التزاماتها تجاه قضايا أصبحت من الماضي نحن نعتقد أنه الدخول إلى المستقبل يتطلب من جميع الأطراف أن يتخلى عن الماضي ولكن من حقه أن يتمسك بالمستقبل ولذلك نحن نعمل في هذا الإطار وأود أن أقول بصفة واضحة ووضوح تام أننا ندعو ونطلب ونؤكد على أن الدور الرئيسي لما قلته في هذا الأساس 
يتوقف على دور الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وعلى ما سوف يقوم به الرئيس الأمريكي دونالد ترامب فيما يعرف بصفقة القرن ونعمل في هذا الإطار لأننا نريد هذا الجهد أن يكون ناجحا ومؤديا إلى كل المصائب التي حصلت خلال الأربعين أو السبعين سنة الماضية إخواني الشعب الفلسطيني على امتداد العالم سبعين سنة وهو يعاني وكذلك الشعب الإسرائيلي فينبغي أن نفهم أنه حان الوقت ألا ألا نتكلم عن الماضي الذي لا نستطيع أن نجعله من المستقبل وأن نعطي الفرصة للشعبين أن يعملان بمودة وبمحبة ولذلك نحن نقول وقلنا هذا لكل من تحدثنا معه أن قيام الدولة الفلسطينية المستقلة هو طلب استراتيجي بدون هذه الدولة أن تقوم بأركانها لا يمكن تحقيق الاستقرار أبدا لأن القوى التي في الشرق الأوسط أو بالتحديد في البلاد العربية المتشائم تجد لنفسها مبرر للتفكير في العنف وبالتالي ينبغي أن لا نتجاهل هذه هذه المسائل أود هنا في هذه المسألة أقول أن إذا سلكنا هذا المسلك فإن العالم بأسره سوف يكون داعما وإذا لم نسلك هذا المسلك وبقينا على ما نحن عليه فسوف لا نستطيع أن نتوقع من العالم أن يساعدنا على بقاء الأحوال كما هي ونجعل الشعب الفلسطيني يتألم من هذا الصراع ونحن نتحدث في من من مجتمع إلى مجتمع ومن منتدى إلى منتدى ويبقى الشعب الفلسطيني شعب يعاني من هذا الوضع هذا أمر انتهى وأنا أعتقد أن الفلسطينيين قد حسموا أمرهم وأن الإسرائيليين قد حسموا أمرهم أنهم يعملون معا حتى يدخلوا إلى المستقبل لن نطول عليكم كثيرا نحن سنستمر في جهودنا وفي التواصل مع الأطراف ونرحب بأي جهد آخر تحت هذا المسار وندعو الجميع أن يعطوا أنفسهم فرصة يفكروا في المستقبل ولا يفكروا في الصراع على أساس ما كان في الماضي حبيت أن أقف اليوم معكم هنا وأتحدث هذا بهذه الاختصار وبهذه الصراحة شكرا Thank you very much indeed. Before we turn to uh, the debate, uh, let me just recall uh, one point from, uh, from each of the presentations. Uh, I thought it uh, fascinating that Minister van der Leyen recalled that there is now a meeting taking place in Istanbul to discuss the Syrian issue. And of course, the diplomacy around the Syrian issue has has had many diplomatic capitals and many formations, Geneva, Astana, Istanbul, and the like. And we might uh, wish to discuss uh, uh, which one of these four uh, uh, will work or how they can be uh, organized all together in the same direction. I thought it interesting that Minister Trenta reminded us of the way in which Daesh and other uh, organizations uh, uh, use uh, social media to magnify conflict, uh, their industrial use of it uh, uh, 
creating uh, more combatants, uh, often ill-informed about uh, the situations uh, in the countries uh, in which they uh, operate or to which they deploy. Uh, and yesterday, of course, we had His Majesty uh, King Abdullah of Jordan reminding us yet again uh, of the centrality of the Palestinian uh, issue. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, a fascinating set of meetings that took place in uh, Muscat, uh, and today it's a great privilege uh, for the Manama Dialogue that we have uh, received the first uh, public report uh, from uh, the Sultanate of Oman uh, on this uh, new effort uh, to inspire a focus on the future uh, rather uh, than a reliance on past uh, narratives. Uh, so we have a rich set of issues uh, to discuss, uh, and I had the longest list uh, yet this morning of people who want to intervene. I'll try to get uh, five or six uh, uh, together before returning uh, to uh, the panel. Uh, so if you could um, uh, each uh, make your questions and comments brief, and I'll call first on Ragida Dergam. Thank you very much, uh, John. Um, I will ask my question in Arabic uh, to Minister uh, Yusuf Bin Alawi. Ma'al al Wazir, hal batat safqat al Qarn jahiza haliyan lil ifraj anha, lil kashf anha? Limada hada hadi al haraka an fi Sultanat Oman? Wa ma huwa al dour al mukammal lati lati taqoum bihi? هذا من ناحية ما تحدثت عنه مع الوزير ولكن سؤالي الأساسي هو عن اليمن جهودكم لربما هم تبذلون جهود وراء الكواليس تحدث السيد ماتس وزير الدفاع الأمريكي عن عن محادثات هادئة كادت تؤدي إلى نتيجة ولم ولم يحدث ذلك هل كانت سلطنة عمان في عصب هذه المحادثات هل أنتم قادرون على التأثير في إيران؟ كي تتو... كي تساعد إيران لربما في وضع حد لهذه المأساة في اليمن ما هي ما هي الأفكار لديكم في هذا الموضوع وهل تحدثت مع نتنياهو في موضوع حزب الله في لبنان السيما وأنه وقف أمام الجمعية العامة للأمم المتحدة وعرض صورا فيها تفاصيل من وجهة نظره لأماكن تصنيع الصواريخ هل تحدثتم عن هذا الموضوع هل تتوقع ضربة إسرائيلية من نتنياهو ضد حزب الله في لبنان وشكرا. Thank you. We'll take four or five questions and then return to to the panel. Could I ask next from Kuwait, Michal Al Faraj. شكرا جزيلا. سؤالي لمعالي الوزير بالنسبة حق مجلس التعاون وأنا. يعني أتكلم كمواطن خليجي ونعرف أن معاليه له ارتباط عاطفي وعاصر مجلس التعاون وعاصر أيضا ما تعرض له مجلس التعاون من صعوبات خلال مسيرته فسؤالي من معالي الوزير كيف يرى مستقبل مجلس التعاون وهل هو إن شاء الله قادر على تجاوز هذه الأزمة والعودة قويا كما كان Thank you. Um, and from Germany and the IISS, uh, Dr. Bastian Giegel. John, thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to come back to the issue of the meeting in, in uh, Istanbul and have a question for Minister von der Leyen. Um, if you look at this initiative uh, and, and the, the parties involved, uh, I wanted to ask you what you think uh, would be a good outcome uh, to this meeting. What is your what is your expectation uh, with regards to the uh, initiative in Istanbul? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, and uh, from Egypt, Mohammed El Fayoumi. Uh, thank you. I actually have uh, two questions. The first one is for the uh, German Defense Minister. I have a question regarding Syria. How do you qualify? a satisfactory political process, and who are the parties that you would consider that they should be participant in the future of Syria? And also, how do you qualify the, the German position and the European position over the past seven years, how it changed over, uh, like, from one position to another? 
السؤال الثاني لمعالي الوزير يوسف بن علوي وهو متعلق بالزيارة التي حدثت لسيد رئيس الوزراء الإسرائيلي كيف ترون العلاقة مع إسرائيل ودور عمان مع إسرائيل في ظل الاعتداءات الإسرائيلية الجارية حاليا يعني بعيدا عن مناقشة الماضي ولكن في الوقت الذي كان يقوم فيه السيد نتنياهو بالزيارة كانت القوات الإسرائيلية تقوم بقصف غزة وقتل العديد من الفلسطينيين شكرا admiration and appreciation to Minister Ben Alawi and through him, Sultan Qaddus, uh, for the very important steps that were taken in recent days. But I wanted to ask, beyond the issue of seeking to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, independent of that and maybe parallel to that, I wonder if he could speak to us about other efforts that he envisions for bringing Israel into regional cooperation. Thank you very much. Well, with that, um, I might ask uh, Ursula van der Leyen to address uh, the, the question uh, that was put to her and then uh, come to His Excellency Yusuf Ben Alawi, so Minister of Defense of Germany. Thank you. Uh, John, concerning uh, the ongoing meeting at the moment being in Istanbul, um, and John, you started uh, your question about Astana, Istanbul, Geneva. Well, um, the Istanbul meeting, uh, the goal is to revitalize uh, the Geneva process. The Geneva process is the umbrella overall. And for the question, what would be a good outcome, if I may put it in a centerpiece, first of all, a centerpiece would be an inclusive Syrian-led political process facilitated by the United Nations. And then there are, of course, milestones we try to achieve. Uh, the milestones are, for example, as soon as possible, convening the Constitutional Committee, a safe and voluntary return of refugees and displaced persons, and here I put emphasis on safe and voluntary, of, of course safe access for humanitarian organizations, and uh, looking at Idlib, for example, the withdrawal of heavy weapons and radical groups from, demilitarized, from the demilitarized zone, um, so these are milestones where I hope they could be the outcome of the day. Of course, it is self-explaining, if I could put that um, in the front line, a commitment to fight Daesh and a strong opposition against the use of chemical weapons. Um, it is crucial that all four parties or four countries commit themselves to these principles. And for the third question, a satisfying political process, well, of course, it includes, as I said, all parties, except, of course, terrorists like al-Nusra or Daesh. Um, that would be a step forward. And once again, this meeting has the purpose to revitalize the Geneva process. Mr. Ben Alawi. Shukran, John. Awalan, an arid an arid baad ma qultuhu fil في مقدمة مشاركتي وهو أن ما لم نستطيع أن نصل إلى حل نهائي لما يعرف بالقضية الفلسطينية والصراع العربي والصراع الإسرائيلي الفلسطيني فإنه لن يكون هناك استقرار وهذا ينطبق على الدول المجاورة لفلسطين والإسرائيل والسؤال سألتيه عن نشاط إسرائيل في المنطقة ونشاطها الأمني أو نشاطها العسكري سواء كان في في غزة أو كان في الضفة الغربية أو كان في أي منطقة أخرى هذا هو الشيء اللي نحن نعاني منه لكن كيف يمكن نحله إذا لم نحل قيام الدولة الفلسطينية ولذلك كل شيء وصلنا إلى قناعة بأنه ما لم تن نوجد حل لهذا الموضوع فلن تستقر المنطقة ولن ينتهي الإرهاب وستظهر أسماء أخرى غير داعش وغير غيرها إذا لم تتمكن دول المنطقة دول العربية وإسرائيل 
فان هذا العنف سوف دائره هذا العنف سوف لن تتوقع هو سؤال طويل لكن مختصر في هذا الكلام مجلس التعاون الاخ اللي من الكويت سال عن مجلس التعاون نعم مجلس التعاون قائم ولن لن ينتهي والدول الاعضاء حريصه على هذا ما حصل من من خلاف هو ليس على مجلس التعاون هذا ليس خلافا على مجلس التعاون الكل ما زال ملتزم بما تم الاتفاق عليه وعلى القرارات وهناك الان نشاط يجري على المستوى الوزراء وعلى مستوى اللجان الفنيه وهناك ايضا ترتيبات لعقد القمه الخليجيه كما كانت في العاده فمجلس التعاون قائم مستمر ربما ان النشاط قل عما تعودوا عليه الناس في الماضي او ربما لم نعد نستخدم الاله الاعلاميه كما كنا نستخدمها في الماضي حول مجلس التعاون لكن اؤكد ان مجلس التعاون بني ونشا وتقوى ليبقى هذا قناعتنا السؤال اخر هو كيف يمكن يعني قيام الدولة الفلسطينية وكيف كذلك جهود الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية الكل مجمع على أنها هي الدولة القادرة على إيجاد حل يقبله الجميع ولا حد يرفض ونحن نعتقد الآن في هذا الوقت ليس هناك خلاف على قيام الدولة الفلسطينية كدولة مستقلة ليس هناك خلاف إنما على بعض التفاصيل ونعتقد أنه هناك أفكار تتطور وأنه مشروع صفقة العصر ستأخذ في الاعتبار كل الأفكار لأننا حريصين مثل غيرنا من أطراف الصراع أن لا يفشل هذا هذا العرض أو هذه الصفقة كما سميت أو ترجمت في اللغة العربية ونحن متفائلين جدا ونرجو من من يسمعون أو يقرؤون أنهم يكونوا متفائلين وليس متشائمين ونامل إن شاء الله أن هذا توجه وإن طال قليلا لكنه سيبقى يأتي بثمار كيف يمكن أن يعني إدخال إسرائيل في المنطقة يمكن أن أقول شيء لأول مرة أقوله أن إسرائيل دولة من دول المنطقة ونحن جميعا ندرك هذا ونعرف هذا والعالم يدرك هذا ويعرف هذا ولكن على رغم من هذا إسرائيل لا تتعامل في جوارها أو في هذه المنطقة اللي هي منها بنفس الطريقة التي تتعامل الدول الأخرى ربما حان الوقت الآن أن يكون لإسرائيل مال الدول الأخرى وأن يكون عليها ما على الدول الأخرى لماذا؟ لأن وهذا حقائق التاريخ يقول أنه التوراة جاء في هذا الشرق الأوسط وأن ابن أنبياء بني إسرائيل من الشرق الأوسط وأن التاريخ الإسلامي اليهود كانوا موجودين حتى في المدينة المنورة كرمها الله وأنه نحن في عالم متطور وأن إسرائيل تملك من الإمكانيات ما يجعلها تستفيد وتفيد 
وأن المعاناة هذا التي عانى منها الفلسطينيين وعانوا منها العرب وعانوا منها الإسرائيليين وحتى اليهود في مختلف العالم اليهود إذا يزورون مناطق في الشرق له ياتي بجنسية أمريكية أو جنسية من دول أوروبوية ويتعامل ولكن هذا ليس هو المطلوب فلذلك احنا نرى في هذا الجو الان الذي لمسناه خلال الايام الماضيه انه هذه الاشياء يمكن تتحقق ويكون فيها مصلحه كبرى للفلسطينيين وللاسرائيليين على حد سوى ويكون ايضا استقرار لمنطقه الشرق الاوسط التي هي اهم منطقه في العالم وهكذا هكذا نعم فأرجو أن يكون يعني وضحت بعض الآراء في هذا الشيء لكن لا يمكن أن نقصي كل شيء هذه المنطقة من أهم وأعظم وأكرم من أي منطقة أخرى في العالم فلا بد أن تكون فيها كثير من هذه التعقيدات شكرا Thank you very much I'll return and draw another six or seven people uh, into uh, this important discussion. Could I uh, start, please, with Virginia Comley? Uh, thank you, John. Uh, my question is, uh, well, was prompted by the remarks made by Italian Defense uh, Minister Trenta, but it's really for all the, uh, all the panelists. Uh, Dr. Ressa Trenta, towards the end of your presentation, you hinted at the fact that perhaps we are not engaging all the critical actors. You also devoted quite a lot of time during your remarks uh, to uh, the role of social media and various technological tools that uh, extremist groups are exploiting. I was wondering whether you, when you were talking about the uh, critical actors that are missing uh, in our uh, conversations, you were also talking about uh, tech companies and the private sector. Uh, one area of increasing um, interest for us at ISS in our conflict analysis uh, team is really the role of private companies play uh, can play going forward uh, towards uh, conflict resolution and also towards stemming some of these security threats. So any views that you might have and also your fellow uh, panelists may have on how we can engage those companies and how they can be more effective in helping us fight those challenges would be very welcome. Thanks. Thank you very much. And from Yemen, uh, Khaldun Bakhir. Thank you very much. I'll be asking in Arabic language. So, Ali Mojah Lima Ali Sayyid Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah. في البداية كمواطن يمني أود أن أشجل الشكر الجزيل لجلالة السلطان كابوس ولحكومته على جهودهم في السعي نحو إحلال السلام في اليمن. مؤخرا طالعنا الإعلام العماني عن جهود لتسهيل تواصل اللواء محمود الصبيحي وزير دفاع اليمن مع أسرته. سؤالي هل سنشهد قريبا إطلاق سراح لوزير الدفاع من سلطة من قبل الحوثيين وهل ستشمل تلك الجهود أيضا إطلاق اللواء ناصر منصور هادي واللواء فيصل رجب والأستاذ محمد قحطان وكذلك باقي أسرة الرئيس الراحل علي عبد الله صالح كما سمعنا عن قيام سلطنة عمان باستضافة طاولة مستديرة موسعة حول اليمن إلى أي مدى ذلك صحيح وشكرا Dr. Mohammed Al Sulami. Go ahead. Shukran. Uh, I will ask my question in Arabic. Suali ila wazirat al dafa al al Almaniya. Al kul yurid hal li al qadiya aw al azma al Yemeniya al yom wa leesa gadan, bal al sukkan al mantqa wa al mantqa yuridunha yuridun hadi al hal qabla ghairihim. لو نتذكر من الحوار الوطني إلى المبادرة الخليجية إلى مفاوضات الكويت ونهاية بمفاوضات حوار جنيف التي لم يحضرها الحقيقة الجانب الحوثي السؤال هنا هل تستطيع الدول الأوروبية وألمانيا تحديدا أن تحضر الحوثي إلى طاولة المفاوضات ويأخذ بعين الاعتبار أنه أيضا أقلية داخل أقلية ويأخذ حقه في في الحضور السياسي وفي التمثيل السياسي أم أنها تريد أن تبقى كدولة داخل دولة 
وميليشيا مسلحة أعتقد أن الأوروبيين قبل غيرهم لن يقبلوا بمثل هذا النموذج في دولهم فلماذا يرضى به في دولنا شكرا لك Thank you very much. I'll take uh, maybe two more before we come back. Uh, Dr. Noura al Madrui from the UAE. Assalamu alaikum. Sualli mwajjah ila maali wazir kharijiyat Oman, Sayyid Yusuf bin Alawi. Laqad istakbaltum bil ems rais wazira Israel. Hal hada yaitabar i'tiraf min sultanat Oman bil kayan al sahiyuni ka dawla? Shukran. Uh, and finally, from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Abdullah Al Sadoun. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, my uh, question uh, to uh, Minister von der Leyen. Uh, since 1948, all the problems in the Middle East because of the Arab Israeli conflict. All the Q, military cues, all the dictatorship, all the Iran interference with Hezbollah to liberate uh, Palestine. So now it looks like we are just putting fire here and there, and we are not going to solve the problem of the Middle East. Palestinians are suffering more than any other country in the world. Now my question, what Europe, which is, they are led by Germany, is doing to put pressure on Israel to have a peace and not just to keep uh, building settlements and, and uh, putting uh, like a big jail in, 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 in uh, West Banks and, and uh, Gaza. Is always, when it comes to Israel, you get very hesitant to, to interfere. Uh, are there going to be more cooperation with the United States and with the, uh, the, what's going on now to help to settle the peace? And that is what's going to make the real peace in the Middle East and not just uh, here and there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll ask uh, uh, Minister Trenta first, then uh, Minister von der Leyen, and the many questions, particularly on uh, Yemen, also that were addressed to uh, His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi. Minister Trenta. Thank you for your question. I think that uh, since conflict changed uh, and uh, their actors also changed, uh, uh, with a big role, a growing role of non-state actors, and uh, I'm not speaking just about uh, violent non-state actors, I'm speaking about uh, uh, media, as I told before. It is important uh, to think if uh, there is a role in the traditional diplomacy for what we can uh, call a parallel diplomacy that is made by other actors. And I think that also tech company and private sectors ca could have a role in conflict resolutions. In order to understand this, we have to see which is the interest uh, of uh, the local uh, stakeholder in conflict resolution. They could have uh, a big role, uh, uh, first because they have a network, uh, a network that is made by customers and uh, is made uh, by suppliers, national and international. So uh, these uh, other actors uh, have some interest in the conflict solutions that can be represented through the tech company. This means that uh, when we uh, increase the number of subject that wants to overcome the conflict, we have uh, more possibility to overcome it. Then uh, they could find uh, an opportunity in the conflict solution because uh, private uh, company can contribute to reconstruction, contribute in terms uh, of uh, work and in terms of uh, funding. Finally, uh, they are an opportunity uh, because uh, they can create jobs and jobs 
are uh, uh, really, uh, job creation is really a, a good way <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's uh, to, to, to overcome a conflict. So I think that they also have to be considered. Thank you very much. Minister von der Leyen. Thank you. First of all, um, I want to answer the Yemen question concerning the Houthis, uh, the armed militia. Um, I do not have to tell anybody here in the room how horrible this war is going on, how much uh, the people of Yemen are suffering. And uh, there is a certain fatigue right now out of the catastrophic situation. And therefore, this might be the time for diplomacy now. That might be the window of opportunity that is open that um, we could move forward uh, in a more peaceful way. And therefore, looking at uh, the question of the Houthis, um, I think we have to ask to the table all those who are willing to talk, who are willing to put down the arms. So the Houthis is not one uh, homogeneous body, but there are different uh, lines of interest or behavior in it. So those who are willing to talk, those are invited to the table because our experience is that uh, if you want sustainable and inclusive peace, it will only be possible if all those who are willing to work for compromise are invited. Nobody at the very end, when you look to the future, nobody will have 100% of his interests. But uh, working on a compromise might be a step forward in the situation now, of course, including all those um, who are influencing the different parties, knowing that um, we need a, a uh, solution for this um, for the population, the people of Yemen, catastrophic situation uh, now. Um, regarding the question uh, on Germany's position uh, towards Israel and uh, the Palestinians, uh, first of all, um, out of our historical content and out of conviction, we are standing absolutely ironclad at the side of Israel. This does not mean that we do not have issues. Of course, there are issues we have a different opinion. Um, but uh, th it is very clear that we stand at the side of Israel. But we are convinced that the only solution uh, in the area for the pal Palestinians and uh, Israel is a two-state solution and that this is the way forward to go. And therefore, uh, we've seen, as has been said, uh, the Palestinian population has suffered, the Israeli population has suffered. Um, now there is perhaps a window of opportunity to find a way forward, to put the past behind and to march together forwards. Therefore, as you know, Germany is um, heavily supporting Israel, but as well as that, we are funding UNRWA, for example to make very sure, and this is the same principle like in Yemen, uh, only if you listen to both sides, only if you take together those who are willing to step forward and to find a compromise, we will have a lasting and sustainable peace. Thank you. You to Binana. In Yemen, in Yemen, of course, أنا واثق أنه لا يوجد في هذا القاعة أو في أي قاعة أخرى أو في أي موقع آخر يتناول فيه موضوع اليمن إلا ويرغب أن يرى اليمن وقد تخلصت من هذه الأحوال التي تعيشها ونحن كجيران لليمن ندرك المعاناة التي نعانيها ولكن لا نقول من هو المسؤول لأن كلهم مسؤولون ولا نقول من هو آه يعني آه غير المسؤول نحن نعتقد أن الدور الذي تقوم به الأمم المتحدة والمبعوث الدولي دور يسعى لإخراج اليمن من هذا الحال اللي هو فيه ولكن لا المبعوث الدولي ولا مجلس الأمن 
يستطيع يفعل كثيرا اذا اليمنيين لم يتفقوا ولذلك اليمن ما زال فيها كرسي الشرعيه وانا اعتقد ان كرسي الشرعيه عليه المسؤوليه الكبرى حتى يستطيع الشعب اليمني ان يخرج مما هو فيه ويبدا من حيث ما انتهوا او من حيث اي نقطه يريدون ان يبتدوا به منها وسنجد كل المحبين اليمن يدعمون هذا التوجه اعتقد الان المبعوث الدولي يسعى لخلق اجواء من بناء الثقه وقد يكون انه في بدايه الطريق وانا مقتنع انه بناء الثقه بين القيادات اليمنيه ليس بالشيء العسير ولكنه بالشيء الممكن وسنبقى على اتصال مع جميع الاطراف اليمنيه ونحن في امان نقف على مسافة واحدة من الجميع ولا نعتقد أن الآن ينبغي لنا أن نصنف اليمنيين بأصناف لا تساعد على بناء الثقة فيما بينهم ولكن ندعوهم إلى أنهم وخاصة القيادات السياسية أن ينتصروا لأنفسهم ولا ينتصروا على أنفسهم هكذا نرى اليمن ينبغي أن تتصرف أما مسألة اللواء الذي السلطنة بدلة جهاد حتى يتم له فرصة أن يتحدث مع أسرته وأهله في 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 اليمن هذا جهد ايضا كان ضمن اطار جهود الامين مبعوث الامين العام وهي مساله انسانيه ولان اللواء الصبيحي شخصيه بارزه وله مكانته بين اليمنيين لم يجدوا الحوثيين في صنعاء الا ان يوافقوا وكما ذكرت لكم انه امكانيه تنصير في تطورات هذا وارد وهذا ينبغي الكل ان يسعى اذا كان في اطار بناء الثقه بين اليمنيين هذا ممكن في اطار بناء الثقه بين اليمنيين واليمن كما تعرفون وكلكم تشاهدون وتسمعون إذا تخلصت من ما هي فيه سوف يعني تعالج الجراء وتتمكن مرة أخرى أن تعود كما كانت اليمن عضو في الجامعة العربية وفي النشاط العربي واليمنيون دائما عطائين عندهم عطاء كبير مسألة الاعتراف مسألة قد تجاوزها الزمن لم لم تعد لها قيمة بعدما تم توقيع الاتفاقيات السلام مع إسرائيل بعد حرب ثلاثة و احنا نتحدث عن المستقبل ما نتحدث عن الماضي ولا نتحدث عن شعارات الماضي اسرائيل كما قلت دوله من دول المنطقه فالاولى ان نتعامل معها بايجابيه حتى تتعامل معنا بايجابيه وهذا هو المستقبل وبالتالي يعني كما قلت انه 
ندعو المتشائمين ان يتحولوا ان يكونوا عكس ذلك ان يكونوا عندهم امل وعندهم قدره لتحقيق هذا الامر شكرا Thank you very much. We'll have uh, one more round of questions. I may not be able to include anyone, but I'll do my best if everyone is crisp. From Australia, Billy McCarthy Price. Thank you, John, and thank you to the panel for your time today. Um, you've all mentioned the importance of guaranteeing the security and prosperity of the Middle East for future generations and for the young people of the region. Young people are often the most significantly affected by conflict um, and instability. I wanted to know more about what you see as the role of young people in building peace and how they can be better incorporated into the co-design of diplomatic solutions. Thank you. Nick Redman. Thank you. It's a question for Minister von der Leyen. Um, you spoke powerfully and clearly about Jamal Khashoggi. Um, many Western states, like Germany, your allies, have, have promised that there will be consequences for bilateral relations as a result. Could you tell us why the murder of one man, however gruesome and sensational, has had greater political effect on Western policy towards Saudi Arabia than the conflict death of several thousand children in Yemen since 2015? Philip Dunn from the UK. Uh, thank, thank you. Could I just start by applauding the efforts of Minister Alawi and the Sultanate of Qaboos in bringing the Palestinian-Israeli issue back to the fore? And, and in particular for the statement that you've made today about the pragmatic way in which you're approaching this. And could I ask Minister von der Leyen and Minister Trenta what the position of Germany and Italy in respect to this initiative is and whether or not you see the Middle Eastern Strategic Alliance as an opportunity to take this forward. Thank you very much. And uh, from the UAE, uh, Zain Nashar. Hello. Uh, my question is for uh, German Defense Secretary. Um, I would like to ask her that in the light of the impact of the Syrian conflict on German policy uh, domestically, um, do we agree that uh, the impact and the role of Germany and uh, the effort uh, presented by Chancellor Merkel to interfere personally and uh, use the influence, huge influence that she has on, uh, Mr. Uh, on the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, is still be far beyond uh, what she could have done. And uh, can she tell us more if uh, such an influence can be seen uh, in the meeting today taking place in Istanbul? Thank you. Thank you. And from Bahrain, Mona Al-Moyad. My question is to the Amani Minister, uh, Yusuf bin Alawi. Um, I'm very happy to see uh, the effort of... Can you just speak a little bit louder? Thank you. I am happy to see the effort of Oman uh, to bring uh, peace to the Middle East. But my question is um, to the Minister is, um, how can we start uh, peace uh, negotiation when Israel continues to uh, occupy uh, the Arab lands and bring settlement to the Arab lands. And secondly, uh, treating Palestinians not as a first class citizen, but as a second class citizen. So with these two important factors, how can there be any development? And why would the USA and the, all the European countries who believe in human rights and they are talking all the time about equality, they see all this and they keep blind eyes to all these uh, problems. Bobby Gosh. Uh, my question is to Minister von der Leyen. Uh, in the previous session, the Saudi foreign minister uh, dismissed as irrelevant the um, German government's decision to suspend military uh, and arms sales, saying that Saudi Arabia doesn't buy arms from Germany, so it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, will, should we expect to see other forms of, uh, of, of other kinds of things being suspended uh, as an expression of German dissatisfaction? Thank you. And from uh, France uh, and the IISS, Dr. Lucy Berrault-Sudreau. Thank you. 
Um, my question is for the minister from Italy and Germany and also relates to the arms sales issue. So the war in Yemen has raised debates in Europe regarding the continuation of arms sales in the region. You represent two countries with different approaches to this issue. Um, so first, could you tell us what is the current status of German and Italian arms transfers in the region? And do you think that uh, arms export policies should be taken at a more coordinated approach at the European level? And if so, how to achieve this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, ben Barry. Thank you, John. This morning we heard very strong criticism of Iran's behavior from the United States, Bahrain, and Saudi Arabia. And the US explained very clearly the very strong measures they're taking with Iran. Could I ask the three ministers if they agree? Thank you. And uh, the final question before I give a couple of minutes each to each of the panelists to uh, respond to their questions, uh, Dr. Efsen al Ketbi from the UAE. Thank you, John. سؤالي لمعالي الوزير يوسف معالي هذا اللقاء مع نتنياهو هل يعني أن هناك مسار آخر موازي للمسار في في الحل القضية الفلسطينية اللي موجودة في الأردن ومصر والسعودية و والقضية الأساسية الخلافية هي قضية القوت كيف راح يتم حلها خصوصا في ظل نقل السفارات سؤالي سؤالي الآخر للوزيرتين من أوروبا تحدثتم عن الجماعات ما دون الدولة نان السيت أكترز وتركز الحديث على جماعة داعش ولم تتم الإشارة إلى الميليشيات التي خلقتها إيران في المنطقة حزب الله والحشد الشعبي والحوثيين وكلهم عامل عدم استقرار في المنطقة فهل هذا من باب الكيل بمكيالين في ظل العلاقات الوطيدة بين أوروبا وإيران شكرا Thank you very much. Well, that's a, a very rich uh, set of questions. Uh, could I uh, just invite the ministers uh, to take a couple of minutes each to uh, answer those, because I think uh, they're all very important, and I'll take them in, in order. If I could ask first uh, Minister von der Leyen, then Minister Trenta, and we'll uh, conclude with uh, Yusuf Ben Alouri's uh, final reflections and thoughts on uh, these very important uh, questions. Minister Fontelain. Yes, I will do my best to be brief and precise. Uh, first of all, on the topic of uh, arms exports uh, concerning Saudi Arabia, you all know that Germany has rules for arms exports that are restrictive, especially taking into account human rights situations. And that's why we will, there will be no decision concerning exports to Saudi Arabia until there is clarity. clarity uh, about the circumstances, they must be fully investigated and brought to light what uh, the killing of Khashoggi is concerned, and we have heard today that there is willingness to do so, um, and this is regardless of the considerable uh, political consequences that, that, that might be there, but first of all, the investigations have to end. Um, but as I said, uh, concerning the arms exports, there, are, uh, there is a wider range that we are debating, um, and it's always linked uh, to the situation of human rights. Second question was to Syria and the position of the Chancellor Merkel and the influence she might take or is taking. Um, three years ago, we've learned our lesson with the refugee crisis that, if I may put it in simple words, uh, Syria is the immediate neighborhood of Germany and Europe and not far away. And this is a good les lesson to be learned. Um, therefore, we have understood how important it is that we care um, and that we work on solution in our immediate neighborhood um, because it is in our own interest, it affects ourselves and it is better for the whole uh, regional context. Um, our approach in Germany is that first of all, the uh, um, the situation for uh, the neighborhood and the refugees is concerned. We fight illegal migration, 
but this does not mean that we do uh, not foster and um, uh, enhance legal migration, but we fight human trafficking, we fight smuggling uh, and illegal migration. Um, having said that, asylum is a very high value for us, asylum completely independent of the nationality and other circumstances uh, where the person who is applying for asylum, asylum is coming from. We know if we want to reduce the amount of um, organized crime around uh, migration, and it is heavily organized crime that is going on there, if we want to reduce that, we have to fight the causes for migration, be it hunger, be it poverty, be it war or civil war, or be it terror. And therefore, looking at Syria, we are completely aware that it is in our interest that there is a lasting solution, um, a political solution in Syria, that it is being rebuilt under the, the premises I have been talking about in my short remarks that, of course, it cannot be supporting the dictatorship of Assad in any way, but it has to be clarified that um, uh, mainly the, the oppositional groups that have been suppressed and that have fled the countries have a voice that is heard and integrated in that process. Um, concerning the question of um, Iran and the JCPOA, we would have preferred to stay in the JCPOA knowing that there are other issues we see very critical with Iran and we're constantly um, addressing. Um, but uh, it is absolutely clear for us that we know about the malicious activities Iran is um, having in the area, um, the, the influence of, uh, from Iran on Hezbollah and the activities that are behind it uh, are being condemned by us. Uh, we see it as a very critical, but um, in therefore in, in, in this case, um, what the JCPOA is concerned, we would have preferred to have this part um, of the contract that was working uh, going on, knowing that there are other issues that have to be solved and therefore no double standards at all for Iran, but a very critical approach for sure. Last question, young people in building peace and the future. Um, it's, it is the ultimate goal to hand over this world to our children, and I say this as a mother of seven, to hand over this world to our ch children in a state that is manageable for them. They have to tackle globalization. They have to tackle the, the digitalized future. They have to tackle the cyber world. They, have to, they will have to tackle many, many other topics. And therefore, it's our duty not to uh, leave them a fragmented world full of hatred and diversion, but to work hard on, as it has been said on the panel here, to let the past behind us work for the future, work for reconciliation, be able to share um, interests, be able to see compromises and to step forward and compromise. Compromise always means that you do not have to insist on 100% of your own uh, interest, but you have to accept that you move forward toward the other to find a common solution. Therefore, uh, for the young people, uh, this is the world we want to hand them over, but um, there is a second point which is absolutely crucial, and this is not the conference here to uh, talk about it, but this is education, education, and once again education. Most of the conflicts come of non knowing about the others. Most of the conflicts come out of poverty, um, exclusion, um, not being able to have access to prosperity and to empowerment and therefore education, education, and once again education, which is combined of course with the ability to express your own opinion, with the ability to put forward your uh, own strategies as a human being with dignity. This is the key factor for the young people, and um, we all should commit ourselves to that. Thank you very much. Minister Tremta. Um, about uh, MESA, I think that, uh, yes, it, is, it can be a solution. 
uh, provided that, as it was told before, the, uh, it is a non-competitive balance of power. <laughs> and uh, I think that uh, it will be a solution if it is not against someone else. So I hope MESA will maintain the dialogue with the outside environment. And uh, about uh, Yemen, uh, Italy is not taking a part, and I think th th this is a good way of dealing uh, with this. And uh, sure, a more current approach on a EU level <laughs> is uh, welcome. And uh, about militia, I'm uh, absolutely not making any distinction uh, among militia. Militia are always uh, dangerous and uh, for us we know very well them uh, in Libya and we know the effect that militia can make uh, on conflict. It's not possible uh, overcoming a conflict when militia are working. Uh, but about uh, Iran, uh, it's true that uh, Italy has uh, a long-standing tradition of uh, collaboration or uh, commercial co and uh, collaboration with uh, Iran. This does not mean that it's not possible to have a double track uh, on, uh, on this. Uh, after all, you know that we are in Lebanon for many years and we are there also to see and to look uh, after the disarmament of Hezbollah. Thank you very much. And uh, final words and statements uh, which we'll all welcome from Yusuf Bin Alawi. <laughs> أعتقد أن تحدثت كثيرا في هذا لكن لا بأس أن نضع بعض القضية الفلسطينية أكيد يعني سبع كم الآن لها سبعين سنة فلا شك أن هناك العديد من المقترحات والعديد من المبادرات والعديد من التوجهات ولكنها كلها ما زالت يعني في دون أخذها إلى إلى الحل المقبول من الأطراف هناك المبادرة العربية وهناك اتفاقيات أوسلو وهناك حل الدولتين وهناك الرباعية الدولية وهناك قرارات الأمم المتحدة كلها هذه دارت في مسألة القضية الفلسطينية والصراع العربي والإسرائيلي وكلها ستوخذ في الاعتبار عند الحل النهائي لكن بتوافق الأطراف ذات العلاقة نحن لا نقول أن هناك الطريق أصبح مفروش بالزهور لا ولكن أولوية الطريق هذه هو الخروج من هذه الصراع والدخول إلى العالم الجديد شكرا well, thank you very much indeed. Just in closing, um did anyone have any doubt the main strategic issues of the day are aired most transparently at this uh, dialogue? Diplomacy works in small steps, but sometimes uh, also with great leaps. And uh, one of the hardest leaps to make is to create uh, a new uh, narrative. We've heard elements of a, a new narrative uh, today. And I think uh, all of us have to give our warmest encouragement to all the genuine uh, peacemakers uh, three of whom have been uh, represented here uh, on this panel. So thank you very much, uh, and uh, please uh, support our panelists.